Hello, David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, you know from time to time we're going to be doing product reviews. I think they're fun to watch and pretty informational. You seem to enjoy them. Today we're going to be doing one specifically on the Crockett and Jones Tech Berry Chukka Boots. Now the Chukka Boots I haven't even opened yet, so we'll see what's in store for us inside of here. I'm a huge fan of Crockett and Jones. Um, I actually was introduced to Crockett and Jones when Daniel Craig was wearing them with the, the girl with the dragon tattoo, he wore the, um, the uh, Sky boots. Fell in love with them, wear them with jeans, suits, everything. Phenomenal shoes, no break-in period. I mean, they feel great right out of the box. So I was excited to hear that he was going to be wearing Crockett and Joan boots almost throughout Skyfall. Um, he wears them specifically in the pre-title sequence, all the turkey action scenes, motorcycle scenes, on the train, flying over bridges, the whole nine yards, and in the Shanghai scenes against Patrice. So there's a lot of elevator climbing and fighting, and they're really, really formidable boots. And we just ordered them from Crockett and Jones. The folks over there were um, good enough. They're fans of the Bond experience and rushed ordered these. These are actually back ordered right now, but like any good review, we're going to take a look at them and see what we have here. So let's take a look. First of all, the, uh, the box itself, very nice. I keep all the boxes. I keep all my boots in there. I don't throw them into a closet. These are investments. I mean, um, if anybody knows about Crockett and Jones, um, these particular boots are made up of an antique gnaw buck with a Danite sole. And the Danite sole, uh, which we'll take a look at in a second, is very, very good for rough and tumble action, walking around cities, etc. So as we open it, ah, very nice. I really haven't opened this up yet. Um, it's this very, very nice high gloss. It looks like a catalog and a little bit of history. Um, and just so you know, Crockett and Jones has been around from 1879 in uh, Northampton in the UK. Uh, take a lot of pride and still actually have the same exact way of making their boots and shoes as they did back then. It takes eight weeks to make these particular boots. Unbelievable. By the way, in addition to this video, you need to go to crockettandjones.com and watch the making of one of these boots and shoes. It's amazing to see. But then we're presented with something that will protect your investment, and these are investments, and that is this wonderful green-sleeved velvet shoe bags. And there should be one for each particular boot. Um, what you want to do is obviously, after you're done wearing your boot or shoe, clean it. You've seen some of the, uh, the uh, Care Shoe Bond Experience videos, I'm sure. You want to clean it and put it back into the bag. First of all, putting it into the bag, traveling, is a good idea. Protects the boot. But in addition to that, every time you put it back into the bag, it helps to shine it a little bit as well. Nice bag. Very, very good way. Then we've got some tissue paper. Impossible to see, but um, nice Crockett and Joan inlay. So there's all that pomp and circumstance. And then we are presented with the boot itself. Uh, the boot itself is uh, absolutely beautiful. I'm looking at uh, all the details, the welting, um, even the cord itself is very, very, very nice, very sleek. One of the things I liked about these boots right away is, and unfortunately this was born in America and I hope it dies in America, um, the flat um, ended boots that were popular in the 90s that worked into the 2000s, which I still see guys wearing flat nose boots and shoes, they're horrible. These are nicely rounded. These will always be in fashion. Um, very British, very Italian shaped boot. On the bottom, you see what I meant by the Danite sole. The Danite sole is specifically made, um, it's a hard, hard composite. First of all, it's replaceable, which is absolutely important for these type of shoes. Um, the little nubs right here help to really, uh, you know, they're not suction cups. I don't want to kind of oversell this, if you will, but they are very good for getting traction and tread. So if you're on a train, you're on a motorcycle, or jumping onto a pylon up in an elevator, they tend to come in handy. Now, one thing I want to do is, and I haven't looked at this, but I'm excited to see this, is to open the shoe up, because inside, this is an, a, a vital investment, and that is a shoe tree. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to go through your head with these shoe trees. And this one is it's nice and snug. But um, with the shoe trees themselves, the shoe trees are actually made to fit the boot, which is why it's so difficult, don't cut, this is perfect, um, to get them out. So um, if you can see the top of that, I will get this out. Uh, the shoe tree is made of the same last wood 
as the boot itself. So it's absolutely beautiful. Now this particular one, um, these are about a hundred pounds. Now, the first thought you're saying is, I just spent all this money for boots. I don't have any leftover money. Find leftover money. These particular shoe trees do a lot of different things. First of all, they wick away a lot of the moisture. When you take off a boot, I don't care how clean you are, how good your socks are, what happens is, is you get a lot of moisture inside and that can actually break down the leather over time. It can prematurely age your shoe and boot. You don't want to do that. This actually wicks away some of the moisture, but it also helps to keep the shape, especially if humidity got to the outside. It, it literally pushes the shape out. Now, it is supposed to be this snug, but we're going to get this thing out, so we're going to cut the video now. Well, that was subtle. So um, there is a bit of a technique to this. I'm not used to these uh, better shoe trees that are kind of split in the middle, but you want to kind of bring it back and then push up and then it just slips right out. And you can kind of see what this looks like. I mean, this is an incredibly high grade shoe tree. Um, it's got the spring in there, obviously, to keep the shape. It's got the little knob at the top to pull it. Um, it even has the particular numbers associated with your boots. So these are specifically made. The inside of the boot itself, which it will be hard to get this on camera, but the inside of the boot is extremely well made. You can see the smoothness of the leather, um, some of the detailing, etc., which is why you want to keep this in really good shape. By the way, um, different between ankle boots, chukka boots, desert boot, there is some differences. It usually differences happen around the ankle itself. It's a little bit wider. Um, these can be used as dress shoes, with jeans, etc. But in reality, um, as great as these are, as wonderful the pomp and circumstance of the Tetberry, as high grade as this look, everything, um, the reality is, is we've got to test this out. I mean, this is a review, and the only way to review it, this is to test it out in the wild like we usually do. So, you know, um, what I'm wearing is kind of relaxed. It's a Saturday afternoon, so I think this calls for getting into the right getup to... Um, appropriately test this out for the bond experience. Let's go do this. Okay, so much for the dramatic montage. As you can see, I'm in the head-to-toe Shanghai outfit. I've got the dent gloves, I've got the coast shirt, I've got the coast tie, I've got the John Smedley sweater, the Billy Reed, the acne shark trousers, and of course the tent berries. Um, wearing the wrong watch, but I like my Planet Ocean, so I'm gonna keep it on. So we're gonna head out, we're gonna test uh, this into the wild. What better way to do it than to start where Bond started in the pre-title sequence? Oh yeah, we're getting on a train.
Well, here we are at the International Spy Museum in Washington. Wearing the Tet Berries, very comfortable, but we got some really cool eyeball candy. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. Um, what you didn't get to see because I had to shut off the camera was uh, security at the International Spy Museum who were kind of chasing me down and yelling for me to turn off the camera. By the way, there's a blog post coming with lots of very fuzzy pictures because I was doing them on the slide around the visit to the International Spy Museum. But let's not, let's not lose track of what we were doing. We were doing a review of the Tet Berries from Crockett and Jones. I've got to tell you, they were so comfortable. <laughs> I, Crockett and Jones, uh, they do something with their shoes. Maybe it's the eight-week process where there is no break-in. So it was comfortable. I wore them all day long. So I, I wore them on the train, uh, walking through commuters, being stepped on, uh, going to the International Spy Museum, going to a client, uh, doing a four-and-a-half-hour meeting at a client, coming back on the train, getting to the car, driving home. So, I mean... Every little bit of boot action I did with the Tetberries, and they were unbelievably comfortable. You know, one thing I also want to mention with Crockett and Jones, and you know I'm very big on this from watching the other videos, is the customer service. The customer service has been amazing. Um, they're very articulate. They get back to you very quickly. They're, um, they're very giving as far as their time, and they want you to be happy. They know that these are investments. So... Crockett and Jones, Tetberry, come on. I think you understand that. I'm giving it two major, major thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't invested in this, have fun. Think about it. I know the Islays are um, a very big consideration since they were also highlighted, but I loved them. I'm going to be wearing them a lot. This has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you very soon. Take care.